this latest round of economic data this morning. What do they say about abnomics, and what are you advising clients on Japan? Well, certainly the steps taken so far, which have largely been uh, around intent rather than action, have um, improved the outlook for certainly for exporters with um, a weaker yen. And there's some sense of improvement um, uh, addressing some of the issues around deflation. We've seen consumer prices flat, ex uh, food content, which is uh, an improvement. But we don't yet see really the re risking of um, portfolios. We don't see um, any increase, really significant increase in consumption. Um, if anything, we're seeing um, savings rates continuing to increase in Japan. Um, and we're not seeing domestic investors really flock to uh, the equity market. A lot of what we've seen has been um, pre-positioning by uh, foreign investors. How should investors position on China after the volatility in money markets and worries over systemic risks in the financial system? Well, certainly a tough time for China, trying to address uh, a lot of the excesses of previous years. Clearly, the amount of credit growth in the economy has been an issue for some time, and growth has really been heavily dependent on this uh, credit increase. A current administration is looking to address that. There are concerns about the so-called shadow banking sector growing too fast um, and by too much. And what we've seen uh, since February, really, is... Um, the authorities there, PBOC, start to pull back from underwriting some of this credit creation and sending a serious warning, if you like, to both banks and those involved in some of this shadow banking um, activity, particularly those that are issuing wealth management products, that that ongoing support may should not be taken for granted. So there was an immediate shock to the interbank market. And since then, we've seen PBOC come in and try and stabilize the situation. But I think it's pretty clear that the warning's been given. What kind of financial reforms do you see it's coming next in China? Well, the threat of interest rate reforms is clearly having, hanging over the head of banks. I think it's still a little bit too early for that because the, the banks do rely very heavily on that net interest uh, margin, which clearly will diminish uh, if interest rates are um, liberalized. So that's no time soon, in our opinion. I think there'll still be um, a slew of reforms um, around the urbanization policy. That's not directly related to um, the financial sector, but I think the way in which some of the infrastructure spending is likely to be organized going forward, it's likely to be more heavily uh, dependent on the private sector. So to some extent, with the issuance of debt and bonds, that will have an impact on the financial sector. But I think what we're going to see in the near term is a push from the authorities in China to try and curb the amount of credit growth occurring within the economy and try and get that target down to about 12% per annum, which is going to be tough going given where it's been in plus 20% levels.